An index can be created in different ways, depending on how the index is used and managed. They all build on the same foundation, so we'll cover the simplest case now and leave the others for future lessons. You can create an index in Kibana by sending a request with the put verb to the endpoint for the index. We learned in the previous lesson that the index endpoint is simply the index name, so we can create a new index called weatherdata2 by using this command. That's effectively the command that Elasticsearch ran on our behalf when it saw that we were trying to index a document into an index that didn't already exist. It simply put the index into the cluster, and the index was created using all the sensible default configuration that Elasticsearch provides. So what configuration can be applied to a new index? There are two main sections of index configuration that you can provide when creating an index. Index settings and index mappings. There are many, many settings that can be applied to indices, ranging from general purpose ones that you use a lot to low level fine detail settings you maybe use once or twice in very specific circumstances. We'll cover how to apply settings now and get into the individual settings and their effects later. There are two main settings frequently used when creating a new index, which set the number of primary and replica shards to use. When creating the index, we can send the settings block in the body of the request like this. Number of shards is the number of primary shards to use for the index and number of replicas is the number of replica shards per primary shard. There'll be much more detail on replication and shard allocation later. There are many more settings and we'll encounter a lot of these throughout the course. An index's mapping describes the structure of the index's documents and tells Elasticsearch how to store the data, which also dictates the types of queries you can run against the index. The mapping contains details about the fields in the index's documents, and what type of data those fields contain, and any processing that should be done on them, and lots, lots more. Every index has a mapping, even if you don't provide one yourself. Elasticsearch can, and will, maintain a mapping for you. A mapping was created in the last lessons for the weather data index, and it was updated when we indexed documents. So let's have a look at what Elasticsearch has done behind the scenes. An index's mapping can be viewed by using the underscore mapping endpoint for an index. The mapping contains properties, and Elasticsearch has created a property for each of the fields in our original documents. What we didn't tell Elasticsearch is the type of data that those fields contain. Elasticsearch looked at the data in the field of the first document we indexed, figured out what type of data it is, and selected one of Elasticsearch's field types to use. Some of these types are fairly easy to understand, and we can see why Elasticsearch would choose the types it has. Float for a decimal number and date for a timestamp. But why choose long for a three-digit integer? And what is the extra fields block under the wind direction property? We'll cover mappings in a lot more detail in the next lesson. Mappings are critical to so many aspects of Elasticsearch, and I want to cover them in some detail early on. For now, let's just have a look at how we can provide a mapping to Elasticsearch when we create an index. Similar to how we added a settings block to the request body to provide the index settings, we add a mappings block for the index mapping. The fields in our mapping go inside the properties block, and we describe the field properties like type inside the block for each field. We can even provide settings and mapping in a single request. You can put the settings and mappings blocks in the request body in any order. So that's all there is to creating an index mapping by hand. 